Okay, so <laughs> you're saying all the corruption is because of the bankers, not the politicians? Politicians are funded by bankers and they're equally guilty. Yeah, okay, but not all bankers are evil. What about the ones that hand out mortgages, loans, benefits? Well, I'm not talking about a banker that you go into to withdraw some cash. I'm talking about the proper banks that make the decisions and they're the ones handing out mortgages and loans to basically anyone with a national insurance number. Interest rates go up, no one can afford anything. <laughs> okay, but when I'm walking through Canary Wharf, I don't Cunt see- Wharf. Cunt Terry Wharf, Cunt Canary Wharf. I don't see evil men and women walking up and down, you know, it's just... And all you see, who did work to those evil buildings? <laughs> Normal people trying to make an honest living, I would honest assume. Living, Look, bankers and politicians are corrupt, and they should be in the same category as child molesters and pedophiles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now oh. you're just being irrational. Okay, look at FIFA, normal sport. Now, they organise tournaments, but as soon as you put money into it, bribery becomes corrupt. So you're comparing the world economy to sport? I'm comparing corruption with corruption. When I was a child, we used to organise tournaments all the time. And then, you know, you have teams, have players, winner stays on, normal. With FIFA, they had the same idea, but you had bribery, and now the World Cup's ruined. So now you're comparing yourself to the biggest organisation in the world. I'm just saying it's corrupt. Add money to anything and people want to cut. I mean, look, I'm not saying that a banker who's earning a living from being a cashier is an evil person, but a bank are the ones that pay the interest for politicians, fund the campaigns. They're the ones who are pretty much choosing what's, what happens in politics. I mean, they're corrupt and they need to be stopped. Okay, I agree there is corruption, but they're still not all evil. Don't know, agree or disagree then. Where did you get all this from? Oh, I heard it in the pub. Um, I'm not sure how to attract the opposite sex. Um, sometimes I think maybe I should do what my friends did, um, which is basically never leave your hometown and make sure you marry your cousin. I want a woman more intelligent than me. It's not hard, but like, yeah, somebody that can teach me stuff that I don't know. Sense of humor uh, attracts me, um, but also he's got to find me funny um, and not be intimidated by that. Like, don't make me give you an auto cue, like, laugh, bitch. The guys like these, <laughs> they attract themselves. You go night after night waiting for something to happen, and then before you know it, you've turned 30, yes, 30, and you feel that life's passed you by. Uh, my tip about uh, dating women is uh, don't do yourself. Ask your friends or family member to arrange one for you. So if things are not going well, you have somebody to blame too. In terms of women, I don't think I've, I've literally never turned a woman down. So what I look for in a woman is just being a woman. I, I look for someone that can eat and drink as much as I can and still look this great, so. I I'm, I'm just attracted to, to anyone who's vaguely attracted to me. I said, I've never turned someone down. I'm not going to start turning someone down now. And also make sure that you know what their GCSE grades are, because uh, somebody has to take care of education of their children. Yep. Can, can I tell you a little secret? Yeah. Go on then. I'm asking Zaman to move in with me. Really? Yeah. It's only been a few months now? No, it's, it's just been over a year now. We, we a knew, year? Yeah, we knew each other. We served together in Nam, each other. Nam? What were you in the army? What army? Nam, like the, the restaurant Nam. Well, not Nam, like Vietnam. Nam, like Nam. Nam bread? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Nan. Oh, yeah. sorry. We got a bit confused. Yeah, we, we served there together. We were both waiters there. And since then, the rest is history. 
fair enough. He's been, nah. he's been good. Yeah, she's quite. Well, I'm a lucky man at the end of the day, do you know? Well, you pulled the world, eh? Yeah. I'm a lucky one, so she's she's quite classy as well. That's good. Yeah, she's okay. classy. She says womb. Womb? <laughs> womb. Womb. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's got me saying it now as well, so. A who with an M. Yeah. Whom. Whom would have suggested that? <laughs> <laughs> That's Charlie, my best friend from childhood. We've known each other 17 years, and, well, he's like a brother to me. We're very different, though. In school, I was the class clown, whereas he was a star athlete. I went to university, and he got a full-time job. Well, now we're both 25, and he's a personal trainer, whereas I'm a comedian. But one thing we've always had in common is we've always been single, till now. He's now met Zemra, love of his life, and I, well, let's just say I've had some experiences. Like Annette, an actress I met at Andy Hex's leaving party. I used to work in an office and, with most shitty corporate jobs, at the end of every month a new person leaves. And this time, it was Andy, who also worked at Annette. The good thing about someone leaving the office is that you get to spend the afternoon at the pub. So, I'd like to thank alcohol for making that night possible. Oh god, look at me. Try my best to carry a conversation. Do what I'm doing, randomly pointing at shit. Oh good, she's pointing too, that's always a good sign. Anyway, it was a new job and I didn't know anyone else there, so I thought it was a good opportunity to mingle. Would you just look at her when she's speaking to you? So rude. Oh good, now you're pointing at random people you don't even know, trying to pretend that's your friends. Hey, why don't you point at the other side as well? Great. That's just great. Right, what was I saying? Oh, okay. After the pub, we went to Bounce Nightclub. Now, I had no intentions of getting off with anyone that night, but I did learn a valuable lesson in life. If a woman you just met decides to stay with you rather than be with her own friends, well, she wants to fuck you. And the next morning, after one night stand, you wake up to a complete stranger in your bed. Morning. What time is it? It's 9.30. Uh, I'm, um, I'm down, by the way. Annette. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, how much do you remember of last night? Um... I remember being in a bar, I don't remember where, and I remember coming back here. Well, you remember more than me. So, how do you know Andy? Who? Andy, the guy whose leaving party you were at. All oh, right. Um, well, I'm new in the office and happen to send it to someone who's uh, friends with Andy. So, yeah, got introduced and got invited. How about yourself? Uh, he used to work at my office before he worked at yours. Ah, right. Cool, cool. What do you do? I'm a finance assistant. Well, I'm an actress, really. Oh, cool. I'm a comedian. Comedian? Yeah, like stand-up comedy, so... You know, to work and stuff, I'll go to comedy nights and perform. Are you funny? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> so, um, acting, huh? Uh, been any films or been on the telly? I've not done any TV work. I've done a couple of student films, but nothing proper. All oh, right, so you're just out of uni then? God, no. Graduated from drama school years ago. Really? How old are you? I'm 33. Oh, Jesus. Um, I mean, you're just a lot older than me. Why? How old are you? 23. You're 23? Yeah. Oh. Ah, there, there. So, what do I do today? Hmm? <laughs> Best of breakfast? No? Cool. Uh, 
But what happened with that one? The actress. Who? Annette? Yes, yes, that's her name. Uh, was it Annette? Yes, Annette. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember as the actress, that's why. She's the one you met in uh, when we went for lunch at Pizza Express. Pizza Express and she joined yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, yeah, we're fine. Still it's, kept in touch. Still in touch? Well, Facebook with friends. No. Did you do a lot together? Going out and stuff like that? Or? No, to be fair, most of the time I would just help her, you know, sort of read her lines and stuff like that. Okay, uh, okay so what do you want me to read? Um, well, I'm going to play the role of Jenny, so if you could read everything else, that'd be great. Right, wait, Jenny? I mean, th that role says she's 25 years old. Yeah, that's in my casting range, uh, 25 to 30. But you're 33. So? I mean, you're older than your casting range. Yeah, but you thought I was younger when you first met me. Yes, but I was drunk. I mean, I thought you looked younger, and you do look younger than your age, but not 25. I mean, uh, wait, what about um, Susie? I mean, she's in here somewhere. Um, yeah, look, Susie, she's the best friend character. She doesn't have anything important to say. I mean, that would be easy for you. I want to play Jenny. I mean, it's not often you get roles like this. Well, I wonder why. I mean... Look, there's the mum character, she's 40, that's perfect. Seven years older than you, which is closer than 25, that's eight years younger. Wait, you think I look 40? No, 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 it's not that you look 40, it's just the look, fact that the 25... has nothing to do with how old you are, it's about how you look. But I did the math. But age never makes sense. Well, you're telling me, because look, I mean, Jenny's 25 and the mum's 40, that would mean that she had her when she's 15? But the line is, when I was your age, I became a mother, so that would mean that... She should be 50, so should the mum rule be 50? This doesn't make any sense. No, no, the story makes sense. It's the casting that doesn't make sense. All right, okay. Well, you can be wherever you want. Uh, person you're older for, person you're younger for. Hey, let's carry on. Okay. Let's just see what the line is. When you're ready. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, interior, bedroom, midnight. Jenny's sitting up in the bed crying. Shouldn't you start crying? Oh no, we're just doing a read through. Can you just read this by yourself then? I just need to focus on my lines. Okay, okay, that's fine. Ready to continue? Mm -hmm. Interior, bedroom, midnight. Jenny's sitting up in the bed crying. Aaron walks in. Aaron, I didn't see you there. Aaron notices Jenny crying and rushes to read. He sits by her side on the bed. Wait, I thought Aaron was her boyfriend. He is. So why is he rushing to her aid? Because he loves her. If he loves her, why does he just leave her alone? It's a romantic scene. He's trying to show his affection towards her. By bothering her when she clearly wants to be left alone? It's a film. It's not real. It'll all work out in the end. Let's just... Okay, fair enough. I mean, you know, what do I know about films? I just uh, watched them. What did your agent say? I don't have an agent. Let's just carry on. All right, okay, okay. Ready to continue? Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh my God, what's wrong? I didn't get the promotion. Oh my God, honey, I'm so sorry. Open bracket, side, close bracket. And after all hard work you put in, Wait, make sure. Stop. What are you doing? I'm reading the lines. Why are you reading them like that? Well, just so you can tell the difference between Aaron's bits and other bits. Well, read them better than that. Well, I mean, I don't know any better. I'm not an actor. I'm a comedian. I just go on stages myself. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. So if you could just read the lines before and after mine, that'd be great. Fine, fine. You can act and I'll just react to what you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. After all, acting is reacting. Am I right? Mm. Mm, exactly. Okay, uh, I'll try again. Oh my God, honey, I'm so sorry. Open bracket, side, close bracket. And after all the hard work you put in, the extra hours, the long nights. Really? Look, in order for me to do this, I need to know what's Aaron's motivation. So, how long were you used together? Who? You and, uh, was it that actress? Oh, Annette? Yes, oh, um, well, we weren't really together, to be honest, but, you know, occasional meet up, whatever. You still talk to her? Text, yeah, messages, the old stuff. So you, does she reply back and you talk to each other? Nah. How's that? Don't know, really. Just 
kind of faded out. out. Um, so, let me give you a tip. What's next time to do to a girl? The way to talk to her? Yeah, I, I know. Just offer her a drink and uh, hopefully she'll say no. no. It's not just offer. It's the, word, it's the way you talk to her as well. It's not just... You offer a drink, what, what are you going to do after that? Offer another one? <laughs> well, yeah, that's sort of the idea. But that's... The, and then she's there all night asking for drinks and drinks. If, if you're going to get a real girl, she'll offer you one. That's when she's going to show her appreciations. If you get one round, she gets the other round. <laughs> That's how I see it, rather than <laughs> milking a pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, I guess I'll try that next time. Just uh, buy one and buy wait one. until she yeah, buys have, another. Yeah, have, have one, see how she gets on. And she's probably waiting for you to offer another drink. Offer another drink. If she's saying no, if she doesn't get up or doesn't take anything out, then get that drink and enjoy it for yourself and for her as well. <laughs> but then, if third time, that's no time. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, that, that, I don't. That's, that, that's just pushing her luck. So it's like, it's like a little test. A test. Test. That's how you. She she's testing you. You're testing her. All right. So what is this test? You 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 offer a drink. Uh huh. See how you get on. Enjoy the conversation. And wait for another one. See if she's gonna offer me a drink. Of course. What woman offers a guy a drink? Well, then you know she's not. She's there just for drinks. Drinks for free. And this is the test. That is the test. So offer one. Have the drink. Have the drink. If she knows she's not offering you, get another drink. And if she's not offering you again, then that's that's about it. You have to. So it's a two drink minimum. Hmm. A two drink minimum. For me, it's a two drink. <laughs> first, enough. first test. See if she passes. The second one is for my pleasure. Drink it. Then she, if she offers, then she offers. She, she's quite interested in it, right? What, are you just get rid of her? Yeah, trust me on that. Where do you get this from? The Cardo test from Brock Still. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> well, that's some advice. Well, do you ask comedians for advice? No. Comedians give the worst advice. I'd say... What you should never do in the first date is cry. Just get as drunk as you can and hope they are as well and somebody's gonna like something. Or drink too much. Because then you forget things and you fall over and you embarrass their friends. All right, it's real simple, all right? This is what you gotta do. You gotta make them laugh, that's your job. But for God's sakes, don't use your material. That stuff's awful. Don't tell her you're a comedian, um, because you're not. Um, like, you do what, open mics, like, sometimes, like once a week or whatever? Yeah, you're not a comedian, you have a job, right? You have a job, tell her the job you do. Don't tell her you're a comedian until that's your sole source of income. Until then, it's just a hobby. Um, if, if you want to appeal to others, lie. That's the only way that it's ever gonna happen. The majority of people, horrible individuals, so if you want to appeal, lie. Tell them that you earn money. Tell them that you actually care about what their opinion, pretend you're listening, you know, just, yeah, just lie. It's the easiest way to get anywhere in life, innit? That'd be my advice, don't be yourself. Don't be me, don't be yourself. Just, just, just don't be yourself. Oh, unless she's like just some girl you met at a party, you're not gonna see her again, in which case, tell her whatever the fuck you want. And you probably won't see her again anyway, so tell them all that, who cares? If you want to get women, get a puppy. Women love cuddly animals. So get a puppy or a kitten. Okay, here's, here's a great one. Uh, if you're going on a date, uh, play Eye of the Tiger to yourself in your earphones on the way. Adds a sort of sense of going into battle. Brush your teeth. Listerine. Yeah, fresh breath. Women like fresh breath. You have to be there if your mouth is nice and fresh. Uh, know about a TV show, but not like The Wire or Breaking Bad, because that's just like Wikipedia, everyone knows that. Like find like a really like, cool TV show she's never even heard of, and like, oh, I'll show it to you one day. she will be like, oh, okay. And then like, have a Netflix and chill thing, but actually watch it, and then fuck afterwards, because you can do those both things in one night. That's fine. Um, and you're really quick, probably. Um... Cooking, you gotta be able to cook. Women love a man who can cook as well. So get a signature dish and prepare it for her, invite her over, 
put something intelligent on. Don't put on, don't put on the regular stuff like, um, like Sopranos. Put on like um, David Attenborough, um, Blue Planet, because women love animals. If you're going to take someone out for a date, do not go to the cinema for a first date. Because if you do not want to talk to them for a couple of hours, you don't want to be together. Sitting in somewhere dark with someone, watching something else in absolute fucking silence, hoping to God that your hands will touch, is a pointless exercise. Go out for a meal, go out for a drink, go out and be dead. Everyone's got good things to say about the dead. And some people are into that. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's not going well, just leave, like mid-sentence, mid-sentence, just leave. Cause that is the best way to end anything. If a woman lets you piss on a marrier. You're a funny guy, you're a comedian. Why don't you tell him a few jokes? <laughs> One of the reasons I'm a comedian is because I fail with women. All my jokes are about my embarrassing moments. Don't fail with women, that's just stupid. Don't get rejected. <laughs> you think I try to get rejected, it just happens. So why don't you invite someone to one of your shows? They can see where you perform. Yeah, I did that once and it bombed. Really? Yeah. Before the show started, Mara sat at the comedy club. She gave me a hug and I gave her a peck on the cheek. We were chatting at the bar and it was going really well. You know, making good conversation. But as soon as I went on stage, I just went blank. And my mouth went all dry. You know, like a rain and slippy cartoon. After that, the audience started to boo, and then, well, I just started to panic. The more I panicked, the more they booed, but all I saw was her watching me as I struggled on stage. They booed throughout my whole set. But what made it worse was, at the end of the night, we walked back to the station in silence. I didn't even know what to do. Well, I said goodbye, but she didn't say anything back. No hug, no goodbye, just nothing. She just floated away, like the car in Mystic River. And I never saw her again. Well, that's quite a funny story. Why don't you say that? Why do you stand up comedy? Well, I do, and they laugh at my expense, so thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, you got me laughing as well. I also, what about the girls that come watch you? You can approach them at the bar, say hello. They pro they'll probably like you. Yeah, it happens, but it's a little bit tricky. I, I had that once. Uh, I was doing a gig in Birmingham, and a girl approached me afterwards and said, like, you know, do you want to add me on uh, Twitter? And she did. She followed me on Twitter, and uh, yeah, it was quite nice. You still talk to her? No, we never spoke since, because she's in Birmingham, and I'm in London, so a bit tricky, as I said, to, uh, to meet up with her. Mm. You could have made her after the show. Nah, usually what happens is we just, you know, do the gig and then get right back in the car, because we've got to travel everywhere, so... No, can't really, you know, have like one night stands with people in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, they, they always say when they find out you're a comedian, they say, uh, oh, you've got a sense of humour. Women love someone with a sense of humour. You must get laid all the time. That's bollocks. Women like a very specific sense of humour. You could have the best joke on a dying child in the Middle East. No one's getting wet over that. Dating as a comedian is great because it means you've always got an excuse if you don't want to see her. Like, oh, I've got a gig tonight. It's... Very specific. It's banter that, that women like. Stand-up comedy is a lot like dating. You drive 100 miles for a five-minute thrill, hoping you're going to turn it into a 20-minute bit of excitement. You know, it's, it's a whole idea of, like, a Tinder joke. That's what women... A specific women that go for the sense of humour, that's what they like. Uh, yeah, stand-up comedy, it's, it's kind of like dating, except that uh, sometimes I enjoy it and sometimes they ask you back, so that's different. Uh, and sometimes in comedy they let you finish your sentence and they get your jokes. They're not going to like a cunt, are they? Women are like gigs, you want a tight set. And that's one deal. <laughs> <laughs>
So you're looking to move in together? About time. It's taking quite some time, but we're getting there slowly, slowly. Not bad, not bad. Mm, hopefully, getting a house. This house? Yeah, you're choking it? <laughs> it's not <laughs> no, a big I was way. thinking, why not a flat? It's nah, cheaper and we stuff. Need, we need something bigger for the kids in the future as well. Kids? You know how getting there, slowly, slowly, planting seeds. <laughs> I, need, I need the space for the garden and everything like that, that's why. Look at you taking life seriously. Well done, like man. I said, it's about time, you know? All this going out and everything is just taking it slow. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's good. It's good to become a granddad. Hopefully in some time. <laughs> Alright, there's one advice I can give you. What is that? Separate bathrooms. Why separate bathrooms? Alright. The amount of times I've had a girl walk in after she's been to the bathroom with a cold arse. I'm telling you, you need a separate bathroom. It will make the relationship longer. Yeah. If you're giving me advice, I'm the one almost moving in with that girl. Yeah, but, but trust me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> You've given some good advices in the past, but... There's a lot of them. I don't think I'm going to take this one, because I need one toilet. Two toilets, yeah, one for the kids in the future, then one for us. Yeah, but trust me, when she comes in with that cold bathroom... Yeah, then that, that's why I'm there to warm it up. <laughs> that's the relationship goes right there. More bonding time, the brushing teeth together, everything. Right, well. have, maybe having a shower together, you know. That's the advice I would give you. One, if you could make it, one shower, one shower to share. Yeah, to me. Okay. All right. Well, to be honest, I just hate it when people take shits in my bathroom. Another advice you're giving me now. Why it's annoying. Why? I, I know what you mean. Uh, for personally myself, I can only do it in my toilet. Yeah, and then I just don't want it. I think they should be like a rule. Yeah. yeah, it should be, but everyone does it. It's part of... I'm going to put a sign, like a, no. a picture of a shirt with a red line through it. It's not happening in my toilet. not happening in my toilet. Where, you're going to have one in the garden or something? <laughs> <laughs> Outside access. <laughs> yeah. It'll be... I, I know where you're coming from, people coming, but maybe a downstairs toilet. <laughs> or just the garden. Garden's yeah. fine. Yeah. Got a little mini toilet in the garden. And a shovel, you just yeah. bury it in there. That's it. You're done. Hey, isn't it isn't like really unhealthy for you to have all this food. It is, but you need to have it maybe once a week, a cheat meal from time to time. You know? Yeah, but you're a personal trainer. I mean, there's a cheat meal and then there's just, you know. Extreme cheats. <laughs> yeah, I like. I understand. But photocopying. I miss it so much, so. I don't know if I understand mean, that though. Hmm? I mean, isn't dieting like, really important though? It is important, but it's just like that one day you can drink and everything, but then the rest you go back to routine. It's a day off, how I see it. If I'm working, I finish work and go to the gym. But on my day off, it's my day off. It says it in itself. And I've got the iron here as well for you. <laughs> I never understand that though. Like, cheat meals. Yeah. Now, just imagine you're, like, you're an alcoholic. And your counselor goes, hey, by the way, we're having a cheat day. Yeah. We're going to the pub. I reckon as an alcoholic, that's not going to... <laughs> that's not going to change. Not going to change. Why is it with food that's allowed, but not other... Well, for me, alcohol is allowed, so... <laughs> no, but I understand where you're coming from, from that view. So I guess if you, like, as someone really fat walks in, do you look at them and go, All right? No, I look at them like, and... Commission. <laughs> commission, where I work as well. I think I need to get handcuffs for that man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, not sexual or anything. Get handcuffs, get him on a treadmill, pull him on full speed, let him run. That's how. Because you know that after, after they say, oh. Handcuff him to the treadmill? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Handcuff him on the treadmill, make them run, or in the rowing machine. So you handcuff him to a salad? Hmm? <laughs> handcuff him to a salad? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> But well, they, they don't know about these cheat days, cheat meal days, you know? They, they do every day, but... <laughs> I'm trying, with, with, with my routine, I'm trying it slowly, slowly, you know? And I had a customer the other day, he did come in, saw everything with this, this right now. <laughs> saw the equipment, saw everything. He's like, the only problem I have is dedicating to training. 
That was all. Well, tell them it's like a buffet. You just yeah. do every little the bit bite. slowly, slowly. <laughs> like how we do an example. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so I tried to tell them. Yeah, I, I got him to sign up. Came in, done his first chase, session. Came back, came back in the next day. His body was hurting. Saying, why did you put me through this? I'm like, well, your body needs to get used to it. First. I'm pretty sure his body was hurting before that, just from the... Yeah, that's true. In pain, but he didn't feel it inside. I have to admit, that's the best way to eat food. I completely agree, bit by bit. You need to try these chips with hummus. Mm. I have a bread. Do you ever eat like this in front of Zemra? No, no way. <laughs> she, she motivates me. She doesn't let me go. Eat like this. So I'll go home. Healthy okay. meals. Healthy meals. Yeah, that's the reason why we're moving in together because of the healthy meals. <laughs> yeah. Long lasting, yeah. yeah. People have like weird standards when it comes to like the opposite sex. You know what I mean? Mm. I like a guy who's just good looking enough to make me feel happy, but not so gorgeous that I feel so insecure about myself. Um, if a guy can dance, that really impresses me. But don't take ecstasy on a first date. Shower, or it's, shower's really important. Shower and big, strong deodorant and a personality. Yeah, yeah personality. Because if you, if you don't have a personality, then there's no point showering or having big, strong deodorant. And don't cry. I think what attracts me to a guy is just, it's anything really that will annoy my dad, you know? I mean, it's not intentional, but there's this kind of 16-year-old trapped inside of me that just wants to go to a festival. So uh, I guess anyone with maybe dreadlocks, or a joystick, half a Pink Floyd album, anything like that, you know, just as long as they haven't got a suit or a proper job. I need girth, people, I need girth. Wait a minute, I mean, that's why when I go on a date, I take a girl to a restaurant. My restaurant. Easy. You just sit there, close your mouth, show your food politely, and just listen. Girls love to talk, and just listen. I'll give you one advice. Go on. I know it sounds a bit silly, but... When you te tell him, let's go out for dinner, it's quiet. Pressure me. Oh, let me go for dinner. Let me make do makeup for them. It's a lot of effort. What I recommend, for coffee. I smell coffee. Hazelnut shop. Remember, teacher, the hazelnut shop. Yeah, but isn't like, asking someone for coffee a bit cliche? Like, No, it's... You're just going out there, having a conversation. She's going to have a hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah. No, but with, with coffee, it's a good way to go through the barrier as well. But how should I ask it? Like, should I be funny or should I just... No. Who is that action? Is that a girl that you like at work or...? No. Just in general, just... Mm, well, I don't know her, but she gets on the train, like, at, like, at the same stop. So it's like a stranger, really. Well, you just... Maybe by beside her. Have a have a coffee in your hand. Um, <laughs> one one of these. <laughs> no, don't. let me show you. So why don't you just ask her for a coffee? You're a comedian. You do stand up. Make it funny. A bit serious as well at the same time. Well, that. Uh, hey, would you like a cup of joe? Yeah, that that, that would work with me. <laughs> but I don't think it would work with her. <laughs> yeah. All right. So just simple as that. Just would you like to go for coffee? Yeah. Uh, would you like to go for a coffee? Yeah. Would you like to go? Would you like to join me for a coffee? Is is the words? A few simple words. That's that's what affects me. Would you like? If, if she said, or you could say, would you like me to buy a coffee? She will be like, well, he's buying me a coffee now. Let's go for a coffee. Oh, you know? Okay. Right. And then when you're there, let's get a coffee. Then she'll be like, it's on me. It's on me. Don't worry. Thank you for coming. And you appreciate her as well for coming and... Nice. Do you know where I'm coming from? So do you ever get, like, um, weird requests in relationships? What, like killing a spider? <laughs> I have to do that all the time. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean, like, cold draft in the bed. In bed. Like, I, that happens a lot. Though. I mean, how often does a person get cold in bed? Quite often. That's, that's when you're jumping straight away with them as well. Again with you and jumping in. No, no, I meant, like, um, my sex request, like, I was with one girl once, and like her request was like, bra on sex. Have you heard that? No, what's that? Right, so it's basically keeping the bra on while having sex. So it's bra on, on sex. sex. But it's fine, because like, you know, you get a little pat, like, 
hold, something to hold on to, to grab. Like, but I think knowing me, I'll probably rip that off. Yeah, well, here's the thing. You ever date a girl with big boobs? Yeah. Quite. Yeah. Fun bags, right? Yeah. All right, okay. So, it's so one time I was with them and uh, we're in possession of myself, tossing up and down. And because she's jumping up and down, <laughs> see where I'm going with this? Yeah. The boobs uh, jump up I'm and doing, down. I'm going flashbacks. I'm getting flashbacks. Boobs jump up Did and down. Did they come out? Did they come out? Uh, no, they are. <laughs> they hurt in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have a number? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's kind of. I mean, they're called knockers for a reason. So. Uh, Did they knock her out? They knocked her out. Did you knock her out? That's the main thing. <laughs> she was already knocked out. <laughs> you can't knock her out once she's knocked out. Oh, uh, girls really like sex as much as you do. I know. Contrary to popular opinion, we really love sex as well. Um, we're just better at it. That's why we have higher standards. Ah, uh, but best. Boob award goes to Alice. The uh, the one from uni. Is it? Yeah, I met I met her a few times. Yeah, you were there. I mean, remember when you came to Halls? And it was the girl that I used to chat to yeah, on the yeah, bus stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She. That was Alice. All right, so yeah, Alice was the one that I was chatting to her for like months and months at uni. I met her on the first day of Halls, and then we would like occasionally see each other on the bus stop. And then after first year. She kind of went back home, but we kind of messaged each other a few times and like, finally managed to, to go out with her. So that was pretty good. I might shagger as well. So. A shagger? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the first night? The only night. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. How am I going to say? Did she leave or what happened through that? Well, the actual experience was awful. But for her. Why? I was so nervous. Why were, what were you nervous for? I really liked her, but the thing that made it worse was she knew I was nervous. Like, she even said, oh, why, why are you so nervous? Did you tell her I like you, or...? Well, at that point, I was like, Ooh. Well, what can you say? So, did you see her again? No, what made it worse was, you know how, like, in my uni, there's these articles, so they have, like, you know, the, the Thames, Times, whatever it's called. Yeah. There was an article about sort of one night stands in uni, and she wrote one about, about me. Seriously? Yeah, she said, he's not that good in bed, but he was cute, and I knew it was me. How did you know it was you? He was cute. You are more than cute. <laughs> Look, I get a few compliments here and there, but the ones I always get, right? So, sexy, never. Handsome, occasionally. Beautiful, once. I call you beautiful sometimes. Exactly, once. But cute, always cute. Maybe adorable, but always, always cute. But listen to this. Maybe listen, read this. This is what I got a compliment the other day in Instagram. I've never heard this word before. One second, let me log into it. No, suave. Suave. What's that? Suave is like, um, you know, like charm or um, like James Bond, he's got suave. You know I mean? I'll, I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that. You get suave, I get cute. But you're cute, that's the thing. Trust am I right or am I right? <laughs> <laughs> no other options. <laughs> no, no other options, two options. It's horrible, man. I mean, you like a girl really much and then you ruin it. Well, because I'm nervous and... I was nervous, it happens. Can I not call her back and tell her? No, she went back home and never saw her again afterwards. Then you want to go back with her? If I could, I would, my friend. If I could, I would. So, and how long ago was this with Alice? Um, 2011, 12. I was. Yeah, I was in my second year of uni, so. We met first year, that was 2011. Mm. And then, as I said, chatting back and forth for a year. Um, but yeah, we went out, we went out on, wow. I think, a, a week before second year started. Yeah, so it doesn't count. Yeah. So a few years ago. A first date is a bit like your first stand up. Stand-up comedy is a lot like dating, uh, whether you're on stage or on a date, 
Too much information leads to awkward silences. So dating is a bit like stand-up in general, really. You, you start out and you're enthusiastic, you're excited, you're a bit nervous. And by the end, it's pretty pointless. You're crushed. It's just like a big crushed fly on a massive piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, I really like that girl, but we move on. Yeah, but you move on, you learn from your mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy for you to say. I mean, people like you. Yeah, uh, it's not It's not that they like me. It's just, how can I say? I had that... Swerve. Thank you for saying that, yeah. I had that swerve. It's not that, it's just I always was into sports, funny one in, in the class. But looking back into it, well, looking back into it, you had a girlfriend, I didn't, so... <laughs> yeah, but do you not remember her? I mean, like, yeah. I was with Claire for about 11 months and then she cheated me so many times. I mean, I don't really think, like, depression for two years counts as, you know, suave. But I understand, but look where you're now. You're in the centre of London, you're living in London, rather than living in a small city like Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I but... love Glasgow, don't get me wrong, but... I don't know. It's just one of them ones where, like, you've been bullied your whole life and finally a girl likes you in school and she ends up cheating on you. Yeah, but that's how long ago? I, I know, but it's it's still... It's still in the back of your head? Yeah, because every time you meet someone, you're thinking, oh, well, this person just hurt me like the other ones. If if I thought that about Zemra, and I wouldn't have been with her at this stage, you need to sometimes just... Move on? Move on. Mm, I'm trying to. You can. It's hard. Yeah, but again, it's going back to, like... What happened? You don't want to feel that again, I take it. Yeah, I mean, two years of depression, sitting there thinking, right, no one likes me. I mean, what did I do wrong and stuff like that? Well, just not what did I do wrong, but like, why, why me? Like again, like everyone in school bullied me, right? Everyone, I right, so made except, fun of me, whatever. Except from, well, you. Yeah, but we've been friends for much longer than that, and it sucked. But it's one of them ones. I can't just move on and think, okay, well, this person is like. It's, just be yourself. If they don't like you for being yourself, fuck them. Uh, if they don't like you for who they, you are, then they're not going to like you ever. Yeah, but when you've been bullied your whole life and no one really likes you and then one person finally likes you and then they don't like you anymore, you start to think something's wrong with you. Don't think in that way. Look at the way I was here. Where are you living at the moment? You're living in London, one of the best cities in the world. Yes? Yeah. You do stand-up comedy. Uh-huh. You work in central London. Yep. You got your own flat. Yep. Pff, what more do you want? <laughs> You've not just moved, you flew over. You've not just moved <laughs> over. You have better, you know, a better, no, right. better I, life. I suppose if I was still with Claire, you wouldn't have had. I wouldn't have done stand-up and whatever. Look how far you came from. It. So yeah. it's a learning curve. You, you see it. Go and get with old women and big boobs and get yeah, knockers. Yeah. That's, that's a learning curve. <laughs> Put a bra on. That's, that, that's what used to happen to me. Hopefully it doesn't happen anymore. With me. And again, but again, like I did mention, you got your own flat now. Not a lot of 25 year olds could say that. Am I right? Or am I right? I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the two. So you need to think in that way as well. It's not just one girl. There's you've heard this point before, plain fish in the sea. I can find you one right there outside, <laughs> a live fish. I don't want you to find me, a live fish. <laughs> so yeah, whatever. I'm sure you found, you found someone else. Oh, well, there was Bella. Bella, the... Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, the Bella. Bella, a beautiful 23-year-old with a curry figure, which could be considered voluptuous, or just chubby, depending on who you asked. Like Annette, she was naturally beautiful and didn't need or use any makeup, a quality most men look for. It's so that we don't end up with any orange dust on our white clothes. You little poser. <laughs> <laughs> you saved me. Oh, you okay? <laughs> oh, save me again. <laughs> oh, don't do it again. You know, in fact, I'm just going to turn around. Do you not need to look at me to draw me? I can draw you from memory. It's all up here, don't worry. 
Oh, that was Bella. We met at Grand Union Bar in Farndon. I was out on a night out with mates and I was sitting in a booth reserved by her mates. Anyway, we were, long story short, I uh, made her laugh and uh, she let me kiss her. So that's how we got to know one another. I never got this great thing where I go to her place one weekend and she comes to my place the next weekend. And... Would you believe me if I told you she's a research analyst? What happened? I fell. What did you think was going to happen? I thought you were going to save me. Why didn't you save me? I don't know what you were doing. I had my back turned. Well, I fell. Look, you didn't fall. You just lacked gravity. <laughs> I lacked gravity. Happens to the best of us. Although, you know, don't tell NASA. They don't let you go up in space. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you finished? I'll finish it later. Okay. Mm. Are you enjoying my body? Yes. Mm. It's a nice body. I've got a swimmer's body. Oh, really? How's that? I've got broad shoulders, strong legs, and a curvy body. I have worked hands and feet. I do not. I've got piano fingers. Really? Piano fingers? Yeah, they're long and dangly, see? I have piano fingers. <laughs> see? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I am a great swimmer. I could have been in the Olympics. Oh, really? You never know. I could be an Olympic gold medalist one day. I'll prove it. What? I'm coming then. Show me. Swim. <laughs> you did it wrong. I am not. Yeah, you got to tilt your head left and right. What? Like this? <laughs> no. you got to breathe. You'll drown that way. Drown? <laughs> Well, the old stick out your tongue with a dead trick, eh? Don't fall for that one. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, just checking and breathing. Yeah, I was. I'll just see how long you can hold your breath for. I can hold my breath for a really long time. Really? Yeah, like a fish. Oh. <laughs> Such a sexy fish. Oh, <laughs> my fish sexy. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just you. Singular fish, not plural. You're so cute. See, I always get called cute. Mm. You're so cuddly. Mm, I know, it's one of my best features. What's my best feature? Mm, your fish face. Shut up. No, I'm just kidding. No, you got a nice smile. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I just want also got a bit of chub. Chub? What the hell is chub? Chub, you know. A little thickness in the right places. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got chub too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you like someone with a nice smile and a bit of chub? Not just a nice smile, but like a nice set of teeth. Like a bunny. Oh, do you like bunnies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not my favourite animal, but I like bunnies. What's your favourite animal? Mm. Pandas. Pandas? Why pandas? Well, I mean, pandas are awesome, you know, round and cuddly, and despite being sexually frustrated, they're still happy to die out into extinction. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> you know, you look a bit like a panda. How do I look like a panda? You've got the round face, the chubby cheeks, tiny ears, and you've got those black circles around your eyes. <laughs> Thanks. Never knew you looked like a panda. Yeah, you're cute. <laughs> I like frogs. Frogs? Yeah, you know, they're just sitting around all day, just relaxing, waiting for a fly to buzz by. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no cleaning or cooking. Like, it'd be great. Oh, it's an interesting perspective. I mean, I prefer being a cuddly creature, whereas you prefer being a lazy amphibian. <laughs> You are cuddly. <laughs> oh, Adolf. <laughs> how, long, how long did that last one? Uh, a month or two. What? You don't commit, that's why. Right. I what wanted to. No, then what happened? Do you want another slice? I can't eat anymore. Sure. Huh? 
Tempted. 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 <laughs> Here, there you go. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I thought you were hungry. What, I was? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I'm pretty sure we're. Mm. I fell asleep in Can we watch something? Yeah, sure. Let me show you my stand up. You're funny. I made you laugh, didn't I? Yeah, like after the third attempt. <sighs> Alright, there. Yeah, well, watch this. Glasgow, so here you are. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank Glasgow! You. Nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> I got a love about doing comedy is you do get to travel around, come to places like Birmingham and stuff. And one of the things I've noticed is that the Scottish accent is very popular, as we've just realised. Do you like the Scottish accent, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, I know you like it because whenever I speak to someone in a Scottish accent, they speak back to me in a Scottish accent. <laughs> I don't know why you guys do that. It could be a normal conversation, you know. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? You're Chinese. I don't know why I do that. What's worse is that their Scottish accent is better than my Scottish accent. But anyway, now there's some words you guys just like, you know, worm, bless you. Uh, worm, fish. But uh, I've learned your more popular word. This is your uh, most popular word in Scottish. Murder. <laughs> Whenever we say murder, you just laugh. I don't know why. Uh, which is strange because, you know, England and Scotland, we have a history of uh, trying to murder one another. But, uh, no, the first thing I always get when you do meet people, you try to build a connection, of course, and uh, they say things like, Oh, you're from Scotland? Oh, my dad's Scottish. Great. My dad isn't. <laughs> no, I'll tell you about my parents. They're a lot of people. Uh, Middle Eastern, Muslim immigrants. But, you know, they're not, uh, you know, cultural. They weren't strict at all. They, uh, they sent me to a Catholic school, in fact. Uh, no particular reason to cross the road, but uh, <laughs> lazy parenting of anything. But the thing with the, the uh, who's been to Catholic school? Has anyone had Catholic school experience? Yeah, yeah, that's the reaction I always get. People don't like it. I loved my experience. I don't know what it was like for who. Was it yourself that cheered? No, that was yourself. Yeah. Oh, did you not like it? Loved it. I loved it as well. Remember hymns? Hymns. That's Scottish accent. Hymns. Hymns like Kumbaya, my lord. Like a Virgin by Mary. It's a, good one. it's a great song, that one is. Yeah. Obviously, you get bread. Remember having the bread is there? I never got the bread because I was Muslim. <laughs> Rarely Muslim get that. But um, the, thing with, the thing with the bread is stuff like I, I begged and pleaded with my teachers to, to ask for the bread. And uh, one day they said, yeah, for let them have it, let them try it and stuff. I got really excited and stuff. Um, I told my parents as well. I was like, oh, mom, dad, you know me? Let me try the bread and come along, you know, be part of the day. So I'm at the altar and stuff, and I'm getting the bread from the priest. And my parents are there too with pride. And Thomas. <laughs> now, I can't believe that you used your jokes as chat up lines. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> you laughed. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, um, what should I uh, call you? Bella? No, I mean, like, we've been together for, but, you know, um, two weeks now. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I can't really call my girlfriend. Yeah, so just call me Bella. You know, but I was with my mates the other day, and they were like, oh, what'd you do this weekend? I'm off with Bella. They're like, who's Bella? What's Bella? Just a friend? Yeah, no, but you're more than just a friend. Look, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. So I'm happy just chilling, watching Netflix, eating pizza, and having sex. You know, that's that's good. I don't, I'm just, just curious. That's all. That's fine. Cute. <laughs> well, that's what she said. <laughs> uh. So, what did you do for her? Did you take her out, or? No, we just chilled. I mean, Netflix and chilled. I mean, Netflix and chilled. Ordered that's... pizza, sat around in the flat, kind of cuddled up. That's that's not enough if you want a relationship. Relationship is not just Netflix and chill. I'm sure you're aware. Of that. I let her use my account though. I bought her food. I mean, do you take her out like in a romantic? 
to get her dressed up, so. She didn't want to? I'm just not doing one. Tell her, get ready. It's not forcing into her. Tell her, I've got a little surprise. Girls love surprises, right? Just tell her, I've got a little surprise. Come with me. She'll be like, okay, get up. I'm like, well, you have to dress up. Let's go for a little. And that gets them ex excited. Do you know? So take her out. Maybe take her to a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm being serious. I was expecting to say so. I took, I took uh, Zemma to a... Uh, Oh, a sea world? No, it's a fire park. Did you? It was like an hour away. Is, is that all you've got in your fucking lives? Is to find someone else that you're going to attempt to fucking, for one moment, to stay away from the fact that your life is so mediocre, you may as well have killed yourself last week. Maybe it's because you're crap. But that's why you can't get anyone. You're just a very annoying person, and I wish you'd stop doing stand-up. All right, look, I thought about this for a while now, and here's the truth. You should be happy that a girl is fucking talking to you. If you really have everything that you're into is to find someone else, then may I suggest you all get together and kill yourself in maybe the most appropriate way that is possible, which would be jumping off of something very high, hugging. Have you tried blacking up for her? Okay, Mr. Relationship. How can I help you? <laughs> What's the worst part, being, being in a relationship? Worst part? It's not a lot. Uh, I would say what you mentioned earlier, one toilet. But I'm joking. Uh, well, I would say the worst part now is dinner parties. They... Oh my God, how terrible are they? Well, they're not even close to the world terrible. <laughs> it's beyond it. And you have to be friends with her friends? Exactly, have to be. No. <laughs> you don't, don't want to be. No. Yeah, have, have to, be. to be. I have to pretend I'm nice. Uh, do you have to pretend you're friends with her friends and her friend's boyfriend? Yeah. How are you? How's everything? How's this? How's that? And you don't care? No, I have to. <laughs> yeah, you have to. But what can you say? It's... You, right, need so to keep her, you need to keep her happy. Yeah, but when you're single, you don't get invited to parties. Best thing ever. Because it's not a dinner party, it's not dinner. It's not a party. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I reckon if men had dinner parties, it would just be steak. Watching TV, eating steak, no knife, no fork, just, just like... Find it. Like, and, a, like a dog. And one away. thing you're missing out. Alcohol. One more thing. FIFA. Oh, yeah. You've got to have PlayStation. <laughs> if you don't have PlayStation, I mean, there's no point me coming to your house. It's to beat you. I'm friends with PlayStation, and yeah. you just happen to own yeah. it. Yeah. Friends with PlayStation, I'm friends with PlayStation. It's like our dinner party. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. PlayStation is the one that organized it. We have to be friends because of the PlayStation. It's just to control us. Exactly. One for you. And one, one for, for you. <laughs> and relationships are very hard, especially for men, because they have to keep it hard all the time. Go in. Just go. Say it's yeah, just can't. Coming back to the gym, come back with me. We work out, we go shopping. You're, you're free now. Ah, I'm almost married. But it'll be more relaxed now, rather than how it was before. So now that you're single, you just start working out. Do you, how do you see yourself? Do you want to go with someone that is fat? No. Oh, well. So does someone want to go out if someone else is fat? No. So. Do you know what I'm going? Coming back into the gym, working out. Basically, don't be fat. Yes. You said it yourself. Is he right? Should I improve myself? Should I not have to match the same standard as I set for others? But who even makes up these standards? I'm constantly surrounded by ads of what the perfect person is supposed to look like. And on the one hand, I'm thinking, yeah, I should make more of an effort. Sign up to a gym, wear trendy clothes, drink coconut water. Maybe fat shaming works. And hearing, go and prove yourself, sounds a bit harsh, but that's what needs to be done. After all, life isn't fair. On the other hand, why should I even care what others think? Pablo Picasso observed the world in a unique way. But what if someone told him to paint like everyone else? What if that woman told him to paint her like the Mona Lisa? Instead, he was just like, fuck off. I'm painting you my way, love. Shut up. Sit down. I'm trying to paint a masterpiece here. I'll take a fucking selfie. And then she started to cry. I lied before when Charlie asked me. How was that? Dunno really. Just kinda of faded out.
What really happened was that Annette had invited me to Beer Plus One at one of our thespian parties with actors, directors, producers and writers. It's pretty much anyone who works in the film industry but isn't successful enough to get work so they have these little get togethers to smooth and get to work and try and know each other. Basically it's networking. Meet Lucy here, she is flirting with John, a film director who's about to work on his feature film. That means it's a proper film. And Lucy here is using her good looks to get a role, so let's watch. I'm trying to use more lighting and lighting more in my work. Mm. I've always wanted to play the role of lightning, you know, like a, like a superhero. Wow, well, good luck to her. Moving on to Mark. Mark here is a pretentious writer who uses his films for uh, social views, political views, uh, basically left-wing shit. Let's see what he has to say. Film is a medium that can inspire, but only independent cinema does that. Mm -hmm. How does it do that? Well, independent cinema showcases the truth, while studio films, they, they just don't. Oh yeah? What do studio films do? They make bullshit. Okay, stop trying to brainwash us by trying to set us products in your films, and how about showcasing the truth in them instead? Well, what should they show? Show the poor, show the suffering. Make films that reveal to the world how these big corporations are so corrupt. Mm -hmm. And what's your film about? It's a comedy film noir about two men in a park with lots of comedy, lots of action, and lots and lots of sex. <laughs> wow, well, that's very political indeed. I get this right, it's a black and white film, but I'm actually filming it in red. <laughs> Moving on. As I said, we've got a lot of characters here in this network party, but none more so Hi, than the babe. fabulous theatre drama queens like Maurice here. How's it going? You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. And who's this handsome devil? Oh, hi, Dylan here. Nice to meet you, Dylan. All right there, buddy. What's your problem? <laughs> Please. No. Just apologise for me. Apologise for what? You were rude to Maurice. Me? What about him? He tried to kiss me? Oh, and you pulled away and made a big scene about it? It was an instinctive reaction. He made me feel uncomfortable. You felt uncomfortable being that he was gay. Being gay had nothing to do with it. Well, no one else there had a problem. Oh, you mean everyone else? The theatre world. I get that. I'm not from the theatre world. I'm from the real world where we just shake hands. Oh, sorry, because we're not from the real world where people shake hands. As soon as someone questions your sexuality, all of a sudden you're a macho prick that doesn't give a shit about other people's feelings. Hey, I was trying to defend myself, which, by the way, you didn't help. I mean, he thought you were my... Girlfriend. Just do a little... Just friends, actually. Yeah, no. Oh, but you were too busy. We're digging a hole right now. Like you were digging us out of the party. Wait, are you going to apologise or not? No. Did you know for a change? I got ready for bed. What, are you coming? I'm gonna have a shower first, I'll be there later. <sighs> Do you think Lucy's attractive? Who? Lucy, the one that was all over John. Which one is John again? Oh, is that that like really horrible writer who knows nothing about comedy? No, that's Mark. And actually, he's really talented, so if you could be nice to him next time you see him, please. Oh, believe me, I have no interest in seeing any of those people ever again. Believe me, you won't be invited. All right, which one was Lucy? She was the only other girl there. Yeah, um, what about her? Well, do you think that she's attractive? I suppose. I mean, I don't really get to talk to her. So much, you think but... that she's more attractive than me? <sighs> what? No. Look, I like you, okay? I mean, I know we're not a couple, but I do like you. And I think you're beautiful. And the thing about you is that you're different to the rest. I mean, I didn't mingle much, but 
they all came across as really pretentious, whereas you, you're down to earth. You have to get to know them. I mean, we go back years. And seen as you like me, will you apologise? Look, I don't know why I should apologise for not wanting to kiss a guy. Because I don't want to earn a reputation as someone that's difficult to work with. Can you just apologise, please? What does that have to do with anything? I'm 33. So? So, I'm not getting any younger, and there aren't exactly many roles for women, so I don't offend the few people I may have the opportunity of working with. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, well, I thought I'd be fine. When I started out, I thought I'd be fine. I got lots of roles, lots of plays, but as I've gotten older, the roles have stayed the same age. And even if the characters are my age, they cast someone younger. I don't know what to say. Oh, well, okay, well, why don't you write a film like Rocky? Just write a film and start it. Because I don't know how to write. As your friend, what's his name? Matt, is it? Everybody knows Mark is shit. The only reason his projects get made is because he's friends with producers. Welcome to showbiz. There you go. What about you? Do you never get worried about being a comedian? Yeah, like, all the time. I mean... I'm always worried, but I just figured that if I keep going, eventually I'll make it. I suppose. I mean, like, ageing isn't really an issue with stand-up, because most people, when they reach their prime at 40, but, I mean, I always had two fears, right? The first one was that I'll get to 40 and I won't make it and I'll think I'll just wait through a life. But my second fear, and my biggest fear, is that I get to 40, having given up, and look back and think, what could have happened? I just don't want to do that. But you still enjoy it, though. Yeah. I mean, I love doing stand-up. It's an amazing feeling. I mean, you know what it's like being on th in theatre, you're on stage in front of people? Stand-up is brilliant, it's just like that, but you're the one making them laugh. It's your jokes. I think you're in a really great place. I mean... You've got a full-time job, you can afford to pay your bills and tour and do your gigs. I mean, that, that's really great. Mm, thanks. Look, I wouldn't worry about you know, someone who uses their looks to get roles or, you know, someone who doesn't work on their craft. I mean, I think it'll be fine. After that night, Annette eventually goes to me. We're still friends on Facebook, but she never replied to any texts, messages or calls. And well, time goes by and suddenly it's been two years. Interestingly, however, I did run into her again. It was on the London West End on the Shaftesbury Avenue and I was on the way to a gig and she was doing a play, so I suppose it was only a matter of time before our paths crossed again. It's always an awkward exchange when you bump into someone you used to hook up with, but now I've forgotten what the person was even like. Suddenly you start doubting yourself and questioning if your memory of the person was even accurate. Like you start thinking to yourself, I always thought she was taller. I never noticed her hair was that colour before. That's what her tits used to look like. Despite it being so long since we last spoke, it was still good to see her again. Kind of felt like closure, considering that there was no proper goodbye. And yeah, it gets more awkward when you're introduced to the new boyfriend as well. Tim, or was it Tom? To be honest, I can't remember. They were going to spend the evening at the theatre, something I never did with her, which, now that I think about it, we never had a proper date. Well, not if you count me and Charlie Peace Express as a date. Okay, fine, I don't count that as a date. But hey, everyone's a prick at least once in their lives. After all, it's our mistakes that makes us who we are. Looking back now, I'm really grateful of the time I spent with Annette. I know because of the age difference we would never have been together anyway, but I did learn a lot as a person from being with her, mainly what not to do. And despite it not working out, I still think she's a pretty cool person. The same can be said about Bella. I'm really disappointed it didn't work out and we're not together, but maybe it lasted as long as it could. And maybe that's why my memories of her are so great, because she left me wanting more. There are times when I think to myself, boy, sure it would be nice if I could have sex one more time, but that's not because she's hot. If I'm really honest with myself, I really miss those times when we're just lying in bed and it felt like we were the only two people left on earth. It was kind of nice. Especially when you stay up the whole night talking, but you're so tired your conversations turn into random pillow talk. I still haven't met anyone who's compared me to a panda, but 
When I mentioned Bella to Charlie, he did agree that I've also got a better job too. Spending the day with Charlie was great. Even though I don't see him often, when I do, it feels like time hasn't passed between us and there's nothing better than having a best friend who's always there for you. But what's really great is that he's finally found someone. I don't think either of us would have thought he would have been the first to grow up, but seeing him with Zermo is the happiest I've ever seen him, and this is the happiest I've ever been for him. It's kind of made me think about doing the same. Maybe seeing your best friend grow up makes you think you should grow up too. In some way, I've always wanted a serious relationship, but never allowed myself to take anyone seriously, probably to protect myself from getting hurt. But now it's the time to take a risk again, and obviously it's not going to happen with Annette or Bella, but if I ever meet someone, I'm not going to be immature anymore, and hopefully, I'll find my Zemra. So, next time I'm performing in a comedy club, and I see a girl laughing in the audience, I'm going to... Oh wait, that never happens. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I'm still single. Dating is always tough, and being a comedian has taken away a lot from my social life, but it's also let me have an interesting life, where... I finally feel like I found the tribe I belong to. You know, like if the Jungle Book was set in a comedy club. So, after years of rejection and depression, comedy nights are the only place where it feels like home. And even though not every night goes well, it's still so worth it for those few moments of joy. Otherwise, what's the point? I don't know whether dating is like stand-up or stand-up is like dating, but I think they're both the same, where you're exposing your flaws to someone and yet still hope to be accepted by that same person.
Oh my god. Hey. Alice? <laughs> How are you? Good. Wow. Yeah. You look so healthy. Healthy? What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, you just look better. But, oh God, how long has it been? Like three or four years since I last saw you? Uh, yeah, three years since graduation, and I guess four years since we last saw each other. Yeah. It's been a while. Um, surprised you remember me. Of course I remember. I know I've got the memory of a goldfish, okay, but it's not that bad. Oh, uh, I mean, what about you? When did you get back to London? Um, I came back for graduation and then I came back again the following year and I didn't know what was going on with you or anything because you just disappeared from social media like you were having a phase or something. Well, yeah, I did delete my Facebook account, so... And I tried to call you, but your number didn't work? Yeah, I kind of changed my number too. <laughs> right. Um, so, what's life like for you now? Life's good. I mean, you know, after graduation I had a bit of a phase, as you said, but... Um, yeah, no, I'm good now. Like, obviously settled after uni, and um, I'm now a comedian. Well, I'm proud of you. You're doing good. I remember you talking about comedy in uni, but I didn't know that was your career. Yeah, no, that's what I wanted to do. I mean, the only reason I came to London was to become a comedian, so I guess I'm weird like that. Still weird, then? Still weird. Oh, at least you passed the test. Test? Yeah. Whether you're like every other guy in the world or just some weirdo who can make me laugh. Glad to pass the test then. Yeah, you know, like the cardinal test from a Bronx tale. Do you want to go for coffee?